Greetings. We're going to talk today about autoimmune hepatitis. When the immune system attacks the liver, what is next? First off, let's talk about where the liver is. The liver sits underneath that right rib cage. It's connected to the spleen, sits over the stomach, and here's where your gallbladder is located. Again, a better picture. Normal liver, spleen, gallbladder, blood vessel connections. We need to know this as a base because your provider needs to do a physical exam. You need to think about where your liver is, where that liver uh, fits in terms of your total body health. But in autoimmune hepatitis, what we're going to call AIH, the immune system thinks that liver is foreign. It's rejecting the liver as if you might have had a transplant, but you haven't. It's your normal liver, but your immune system has been turned on against that liver and can result in cirrhosis, cancer, transplant, or death. But this is treatable. Let's walk through these important pieces of information. First off, liver enzymes are not liver function tests. AST and ALT indicate this immune attack on your liver if you have autoimmune hepatitis. The diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis is made by biopsy supplemented by antibody tests supplemented by liver tests. So it's really a composite. You've got to have all of these on the table in your assessment to decide your diagnosis, your prognosis, and hopefully before your liver function goes bad. Bilirubin makes you yellow, albumin if low makes you swell up, and INR if low can make your blood thin and enhance bleeding risk. We want to catch the disease early when enzymes are high, but when liver function is normal. The liver is a unique organ with a dual blood supply. This is what a normal liver looks like after surgery. There are segments of the liver. This is important for other issues. We won't go into great detail on this today. I encourage you to look at our other slide presentations on viral hepatitis, fatty liver, and liver tumors to get more information. A normal liver after a liver transplant, pliable, soft, reddish brown. Cut across that liver, you're going to see very little scar tissue just around the blood vessels to provide a skeleton. Normal liver, no inflammatory cells or minimal inflammatory cells in the doorway, the portal area. It's this portal area that we're going to look for autoimmune liver disease and look for that diagnosis. Again, in a normal liver, very few inflammatory housekeeping cells that are there normal central vein, normal liver cells. Autoimmune. These immune cells come in and attack the liver, causing liver inflammation. People with autoimmune hepatitis haven't done anything wrong. It's either genetic, environmental, or both, sometimes medications or toxins. But the immune system is turned on and attacking and killing liver cells. This attack on liver cells through these inflammatory changes can result in scar tissue. That scar tissue eventually can develop into cirrhosis. Cirrhosis doesn't mean somebody's an alcoholic or a drinker. Cirrhosis is the final common pathway of scarring injury to that liver. For autoimmune liver disease, you want to have a biopsy to make the diagnosis and to establish what your stage is. Stage four is cirrhosis. Stage zero is normal. This helps with prognosis and management decisions, as well as looking about the type of autoimmune attack, the type of inflammation, the type of cells that you have. This needs to be answered by a biopsy. Typically, people with autoimmune disease get a biopsy every two to three years for follow-up and management to help continue that stage of their disease, the grading of inflammation. Has their disease reversed? Is their disease controlled? The liver biopsies that are gold standard. Please look at our liver biopsy slide deck. We'll tell you a lot more details. We do this under ultrasound with a thin needle. We make sure with that ultrasound not to hit the gallbladder, the lung, the kidneys, or the colon. 
You can do a biopsy through the neck vein in some patients if needed. We're going to get two biopsies to make sure we have adequate tissue to stage and grade that disease. Inadequate biopsy, marginal biopsy. We want one that's wider. You want to get a 16 gauge, two passes to make sure you have enough tissue. You can watch a liver biopsy on YouTube. You want to watch Dr. Doug Dietrich walk through the liver biopsy procedure and see how simple and safe this is. Let's go back to that liver structure. In the liver, we have bile ducts, we have veins, we actually have another structure here called the artery. And this is typically where the immune attack starts. Though some patients, out in that central vein, the immune system may decide to attack that area as well. But we're going to focus primarily on that portal area and what that immune attack might look like. There are many types of autoimmune hepatitis. I've seen every type that's denoted on here. Granulomas, means are big chunks of inflammatory tissue that might be linked to something called sarcoid. Primary biliary hepatitis, which eventually can lead to cirrhosis, or primary biliary cirrhosis. PSC, primary sclerosing cholangitis, another autoimmune fibrotic condition. Classic autoimmune hepatitis, where we have plasma cells as the dominant cell on biopsy. Polys, special type of immune cells may be attacking the bile ducts. And there are many other types of autoimmune disease. Ask your provider, what type do I have? How bad is it? What's the stage of my disease? What's my prognosis? And what's my treatment? Here's a picture where a person has swallowed a special camera. This is an x-ray of the bile tubes. You can see there's narrowing and strictures in various places here. And this is something called PSC, an autoimmune fibrotic condition that's typically progressive to transplant or death, although that may take 20 years or more. 7 to 15% of patients will get some type of bile duct or liver cancer or gallbladder cancer. So be monitored if you have PSC. We typically now make this diagnosis not with ERCP, but with MRCP, a magnetic resonance scan, to rebuild the bile ducts under a camera and computer. Primary biliary hepatitis, commonly known as PBC, but most patients don't have cirrhosis. So I like this term much better. It's much more accurate and reassuring. This is where special cells, lymphocytes, attack the bile duct. Here's the bile duct here, immune attack to those bile tubes. This is also treatable, but most people, although we slow the disease, will eventually get cirrhosis and need a transplant. That could be 10, 20, or maybe even 30 years with good management. There are new treatments that are emerging for PBH and PBC as well. Classic autoimmune hepatitis, again, plasma cells, biopsy diagnosis, many other types of autoimmune hepatitis, get a biopsy, talk about treatment, work with a liver expert for best management. Thank you very much.